Saturday from So So Lounge. I am Tony. Um, we are here for another Tony Saturday. I am super excited to be with you. It is a gorgeous day here in Houston, Texas. It is in the 60s, which means it is still spring and summer has not come to get us yet. But today I am super excited because my grandma is joining us to share her sewing stories through the years. And if you didn't know and you haven't met grandma before, she is 99 years young. She just had her 99th birthday on March 8th. And I am so excited to be having her as my guest today. And she's super excited to be talking to all of you. Let me know where you are watching from. Say hi, pop into the comments so that I can greet you. I'm going to chat for a few seconds before we start with grandma to let people kind of get situated. I've got my nice warm cup of coffee here ready to go. So let me know where you are, say hi. And um, it is, it is, you know, it's a nice day here today. So um, grandma got up early, she got all dressed, she is ready to chat with all of us. And um, before we get started though, I do have an exciting announcement. Um, last weekend, I got engaged to my boyfriend of seven and a half plus years. And um, so I just wanted to share that with all of you. And I'm very excited. We will be, I will be making a wedding dress of some sort um, in the months to come and sharing that with all of you. So um, I hope you're as excited as I am. Thank you, Ellen. I'm so glad that you're here. And um, Ellen is here. Lee is here. Lee's here, Grandma. She's going to be watching. Grandma knows Lee. Lee came to Grandma's uh, birthday party. So um, she is local. And um, Thank you, Lee. You've you've seen it. It it doesn't the light doesn't do it justice in the uh, the sewing room. But so um, yes, that is where we are. If you're just joining, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from, and um, we are going to get started shortly. There are currently nine people on the stream, so hopefully more people will join in on the fun. And without further ado, let me introduce my grandma. Hi, Grandma. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm great. So Grandma is actually just sitting on the other side of So So Lounge. <laughs> so she's on the other end of the table. So we're looking at each other as we do this. Hi, Karen. Thanks for joining from New York. Hi, Vita. Thank you so much. I'm excited. It'll be fun. Um, okay, Grandma. So why don't we start off by kind of telling people where you grew up? I was born and reared in a very small little town, 13 miles. If you're going, if you're on I-10, which I-10 came long, long later, I'm 13 miles west of Baton Rouge. And uh, of course, Baton Rouge was always our shop, big shopping area for, uh, you know, what you buy in malls now. But uh, of course the malls weren't born then long yes. since after. But uh, I, it was a small population and there were three towns very within 12 miles of each other. Rose, Grove State at one end, Rosedale in the middle, and then uh, Marangwin was the 12th, uh, 12 miles. But for school, we had one consolidated school for elementary and high school, which had been a plantation at one time that was donated to, uh, to the parish. And we, of course, the parish is your counties in any other state. You know, I think you didn't tell people you were in Louisiana, Grandma. Yes, I am a Louisiana girl. Okay. Born and reared and stayed there until I married. No, and, and then I went a few other places. However, I uh, ended up here in Houston almost 30 years ago. And uh, very, very happy here, I might say. And they've really learned to live in the big city. But uh, Grove State was, my dad was the mayor there. 
for 25 years. And we grew, I grew up in, my, as my husband used to say, I never learned how to make a grocery list, never. Because I grew up in a big mercantile store that was, our house was attached to it uh, through the kitchen door. We, I mean, uh, anyway, I grew up there and uh, very simply lived like all country girls lived a hundred years ago. <laughs> I mean, we just, everything, all of our entertainment, all of our, uh, the church and the school provided what we needed, and then we made up the rest. So that was how I grew up. So let's talk sewing, Grandma, because that's what everybody wants to hear yeah. is your sewing story. So when, about when did you realize that you wanted to sew? Very young. I was fascinated with the machine. I used to watch how they cut the fabrics. And of course, my dad's store had a lot of fabrics. And uh, I used to watch them cut. The, they made their own patterns. It was amazing. I mean, they would just measure a little bit on you and then they would cut a pattern and uh, then make a dress. And so who did you watch doing that? Oh, well, my godmother my, mostly. My mother's uh, second, my grandmother's second sister. My mother was the oldest and uh, Valerie, my godmother mm -hmm. was the uh, the second, and she was my godmother, and she was more than a godmother. She was like a second mother. She just uh, always sewed for me, and she was an excellent seamstress. Okay. So Ellen left a little comment. Ellen said she's also fascinating by sewing, just like you are. I think a lot of us kind of start that way, where we we see somebody else doing it or we watch something and we're like, wow, that's amazing to be able to take um, flat fabric and then turn it into something that's like three dimensional. I think that's that's the fascination. Hi, Janelle. Janelle, my friend Janelle says hi, Grandma. Hi. So um, so once you you saw your godmother making patterns and was she making stuff for you at the time? Uh, how old was I? No, no. Was she was was Nanny making stuff for you when you yes. were watching her? Yes. She. Uh, that's the times, the only times I ever sat and watched her, because I was always doing something else. But when she was sewing for me, I was right there watching every every stitch. Okay. And so then, when did you decide you wanted to learn to sew? As soon as anyone would let me sit in the sewing machine. And when, that, when, that was uh, everyone really watched their sewing machines in those days. They did not want it to get choked up with thread, or they did not want it to uh, anything to happen to their sewing machines. They they really guarded those sewing machines, and I wonder now what could have gone so wrong. Except they oiled them, they cleaned them. I mean, they dusted them. People that was. That was really something. Sometimes they made a living doing it, but my, since there was five, let's see, there were seven girls in my uh, grandmother's family that was all older than me. And uh, she used to help her, her mother out by making a dress or something for the younger children, the younger people. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, you know, I had one aunt that was only five months older than me. And uh, a lot of times uh, after I had a dress made, she would want my maid like it. So my godmother was very gracious. I mean, she helped my grandmother out by doing some of the sewing. And uh, if it was for one of the girls, they wanted to watch also. And they all turned out to be fairly good seamstresses, but not not like my friend. And so finally, finally, uh, they let me, instead of the sewing machine, my mother had one also, and I used to sit and sew. And uh, I could, the first thing I ever sewed was pillowcases. They would, and then I learned, my godmother taught me how to do simple embroidery. 
just a little daisy pattern. Mm -hmm. And I did that, but I, I never did take into the uh, hand crochet and embroidery and cruel work. You just stick stuck it, with sewing? Yes, I, I liked the sewing machine. I was never satisfied with well, I did it on the pillowcases, but that was the only time I remember doing it. So what kind of a machine did your mom have? What kind of a machine did you start sewing with? Was it electric? Was it treadle? No, no, it was a pedal machine also until my dad realized, you know, my, my dad really got into all this electric stuff. As soon as he realized, he watched me. I must have been about 12 and I remember this vividly. And uh, he would watch me and watch me sketch a dress I would want. And uh, that's when I started doing that and uh, had it made. And uh, so then he and my mother went to uh, somewhere one day and came back with an electric sewing machine that you use the, the knee thing on. Okay, so it had like the knee pedal that yes. you push with your knee yes. to get it to go. Yes. And so was it in like a, a cabinet? It was a cabinet. Okay, so it was a sewing machine yes, in and the it cabinet. Had a nice uh, board on it, you know. Yes, a regular sewing machine. Do you remember what brand it was? It was a single. Okay. I think it was a single. And then there was another it was one, a Howl or something like that. I don't remember how. I anyway, I don't remember. But then I got to make some kitchen curtains. Everything that was block. I mean, it was okay. just no design. So we have a couple of comments. So I was just going to share those. Um, so Elizabeth just joined us from Idaho. Hi, Elizabeth. Thanks for joining. And then Ellen. Ellen said your dad was an early adopter of technology. Yes, he was. So why don't you just talk a little bit about how electricity came into your house? Because that was not something that everybody had back then, was it? No. No, my dad had this large mercantile store and he had been a bachelor un until uh, 25. And finally, as he says, he married the prettiest girl in town. So that was my mom. And she really loved to sew. And for years, my mother only sewed for herself. She never sewed for us unless it was a Sunday dress. My mother never sewed cotton dresses. She only sewed fine fabrics. But she was in a position then that she could have her everyday dresses made. So then but when did dad, electricity come to your house? Well, my dad was, as I said, he was reading all about this. And he had this big store. And he thought electricity would be fabulous. Lights, especially lights for how it all started with lights and uh so ge he made a, had a contract then with ge and ge uh, they did the electricity in the store and he brought it into his house of course and then as the appliances became available naturally he had the contract and they would bring the sample and we would, it would be put into the house and then it would be used as a demonstrator. And they sold from that, the, uh, then the, as the electric ice box came into, then the, the help would say, well, what is the poor ice man going to do? Daddy said, well, he'll find something else to do. So they had the electric ice box and uh, each piece that, they were perfecting and getting out into the, to the United States, my dad would get one and then people would come into our house and look at the, uh, at, at the being demonstrated or they would send a man, who later never came, they would send a man to demonstrate. And then later, the, a, la a lady would come, uh, I remember the lady coming and fixing a whole meal and they invited the people who were interested to come and see how it would be cooked with the different. And that was with an electric stove? Yeah, with the electric stove. As I told you, the electric iron was the thing that most people had someone come in and iron for them. Well, not everybody, but not the 
the people who lived in town and could afford to have 50 cents a day maybe to have someone come in and iron for you. Well, they were they don't weren't happy with that card coming on them holding the well, you have to explain it grandma because people don't understand when you got electric into your house where did they put the plugs were there plugs in the walls or no, was... at first at first everything came through the line from the ceiling okay so is that where you had to plug the iron in and yes and then the iron cord was straight down and the, you put the iron board under it okay I remember okay and then so then you had what how did you have to iron things before you had an electric iron well they just had them on those charcoal brazes about oh you know the size of a big pot that would hold two irons or three irons if you could have had three and they would get hot and then they had they had a pad that went around the handle because it was hot also then they'd iron until it got cool. They'd put it back on the brazier and get another one. And why they thought that was a better system, don't ask me. But they, would, they weren't too happy about this electricity coming into their hands. Okay. My daddy used to tell us stories about that because I thought he, would, he was very generous telling my sister and my brother and I stories about and electricity was one thing that he talked about a lot. And of course, for him, it meant adding machines, it meant bookkeeping machines, then it just become big meat uh, machines, I mean, uh, refrigerators for the store. Just, it, it just changed, as, as my dad said, the whole world changed when, electri when electricity came in. And we in Grove State, were the very first people to have it. So well, that's fantastic. So once you got your, once your, your mom got the electric sewing machine, did you, how did you start sewing and using it? Well, she just let me use it. I mean, I was, as I said, 12, 13, maybe getting up. And also that's the time that on Saturday or Friday afternoon, my dad, uh, and then they taught me how to sell the fabrics and I would help out in the store because uh, that's when everyone got paid if they wherever they were working and they would have the money or they they had paid one uh, set of bills off because everybody charged they charge their groceries and they charge everything to the to one store and then when they they were you see, in us, you had farmers and you had lumbermen. And the lumber people made pretty good money. I mean, at the time, you know, when coffee was 20 cents a pound or sugar 15 cents a pound and things like that, well, people would have cash. And then or they would bring, and there was a lot of bartering going on, too. They may bring in two dozen eggs and get enough fabric for it. Two dresses or something. And, and how much was fabric back then, Grandma? Do you well, remember? It, the fabric I remember was 15 to 20 cents a yard. Okay. And how, do you remember how wide it was? Did you have to have thread. I hate to tell you what thread was a nickel, five cents a spool. Uh huh. And then lace, you could get lace or you could get PK to make white PK to make collars. And it was everyone wore dresses that almost looked alike the difference was was the pattern of the, the fabric fabric yeah. okay so did you when you worked in the store um did you cut learn to cut how did you learn to cut fabric yes i learned to cut fabric i might i say i was 13 because uh when i went to when i go now to uh to uh to buy fabric and I see that little ridge there. Mm -hmm. Well, I want you to know that I had a ridge to cut on. Okay. And I, I, when I saw that, I thought, this is not new. Uh -huh. this, I, I mean, that's how I cut. And then, of course, we had, I had really good scissors that were always sharpened. And uh, 
and buttons and lace and ankle and socks to match. And it was just a, a time. And so one thing y'all need to know is that grandma is like a whiz at fractions. Like we made curtains, the curtains that are in my sewing studio that y'all have seen. Um, and grandma was like, okay, we need to cut the fabric this long. And then we have to add a quarter of an inch for seam allowance on both sides. And then we're going to do a hem of like an inch and a or two and a half inches. And like grandma's doing like all these fractions on like a little scrap of paper and like everything's a hundred percent right. And I'm just like, this is amazing. So like hearing the story right now, like now it all makes sense about how great grandma is with fractions because she started so young cutting fabric because honestly, it's amazing. And she's still amazing. Like if I'm trying to work something out with fabric and yardage and adding seam allowances, like I just go to grandma because that's the easiest thing to do. So thank you, Vanessa, for joining us. Thank you for your congratulations. Um, and uh, then Lee is, yes, Lee, my fiance is from New York. So that is very true. But let's get back to grandma and sewing. So when did you, who taught you how to sew? Who actually sat down at the machine and showed you how to thread it and well, get it going? I would say my mother and, and my godmother showed me how to make, uh, how to sew. But I have had some, along the way, I've had some truly, truly fantastic seamstresses in my life that I've had the benefit of, uh, you know, you've heard me speak of Eunice Coltman mm -hmm. uh, in Austin. Uh, that was my, uh, my husband's uh, aunt. And uh, we, uh, she sold, so far above me, mm -hmm. she was a uh, hard couture sewer, I guess you would call mm -hmm. her. She made, uh, and she had a very high class uh, uh, clientele. She only sewed for certain people, but she always sewed something outrageous. I mean, fabulous uh, things. In fact, one one deal she had. I, I can't name the names or where it was, but she made a whole wardrobe, a whole wardrobe. It took her a year for a, well, an ambassador's wife that was going to go to a post in uh, Europe. And the lady had her clothes, her patterns cut in New York, brought all the fabrics from New York. So you know what kind of fabric she bought. You've been in New York. Yeah. But that, this was about the time uh, your mother was about, oh, it was before Joan was born. So she, she was, you, I guess your mother was about seven or eight years old when we used to drive from New Iberia on, on uh, Highway 90, the mm -hmm. old Spanish trail, to, and uh, she would take me shopping at a store, a fabric store in Austin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would save everything I had until I got there and bought And then I would come back with six or eight pieces of fabulous fabric mm -hmm. that I really, she, she, I would watch her sew and she would give me hints about, oh, interfacings or just matching things. And just really, I, I would watch her for two or three days so. And she, I used to say she had magic hands, but uh, I, I, and she, she gave me lots of, lots of hints. So going back to back when you were younger and just starting out, did you learn how to sew in school? Oh, well, that was, I would say that was where I truly learned to sew. I had one of these unusual people in, for the home act department and she was we would sew the first half of the year and then we'd cook the second half of the year and uh of course everybody wanted a lot of them likes cooking better i like sewing better and uh she was she was wonderful just wonderful and how did she get you started sewing with straight lines in particular well of course everybody had to start that way with a sheet of paper with those straight lines, you without any thread, 
you sew on the on the straight lines and then you had to do the uh, the inner circle like this mm -hmm. around and that was to teach you how to do your sleeves and what have you and your collars but uh and it was the hardest thing was when you had to make the turn to keep the needle in the cloth mm -hmm. you cannot take the needle out <laughs> once you take the needle out you've lost you've lost it so uh, and, and, th and that was hard but and then of course she had blocks where you could sew to the end stop keep the needle in turn the fabric or the paper rather and go and she would just hold it up to the light and could grade it that way <laughs> but uh that that didn't last long i mean she she only did that for a while and then we then to, to graduate we had to really make a tailored dress a real tailored dress so when did you start taking when did you start with her in school how what grade were you in do you remember when i what grade i was mm -hmm. in well that was high school okay that, that would have been yeah the year i started high school because home economics was only available and i took it the four years okay and but the last year she left us to get married how dare she left <laughs> us to get married but then poor the poor girl who came up we all felt i felt sorry for her it was her first year out of college and she came to teach a bunch of real almost professional sewers because uh miss Lawrence, sue Lawrence had really really given us a fabulous uh lesson in and uh making bound buttonholes and making all types of uh sewing i mean uh and you could advance i mean you could buy a pattern and bring it and of course well she wanted to see what it was going to be before we bought it but uh anyway and people she had one uh she had two pattern books on her desk one was a buttrick and the other was simplicity and we could select something from those two books to sew and so when did she did she have the patterns in those books or did you then no, have to no, like have the instructions to make your no, own we'd, we'd have to no we never made our own patterns okay no no we could pick the pattern and she would she knew instinctively if we could do that you know? okay she knew her students mm -hmm. so and so then we, the year we were seniors my best friend who was who was with in my wedding she and i picked the, the same pattern mm -hmm. and we made and it was in set the the colors i mean it was it was it was difficult mm -hmm. it, was, it was a difficult pattern and uh but we both we both made our dresses and they turned out real nice and what you what kind of grade you get grandma well you're going to embarrass me but i always made an a of course you did grandma <laughs> I did. so then did you continue sewing after high school oh absolutely i mean yes Oh, tell tell everyone the story about when you decided you were going to make some culottes. Oh, well, the culottes came out, and I had seen them. So, and this I is when you were in high school, I had right? Seen them in the store. Yeah. Okay. So i I wanted to get the material to make them. So I got a double sheet of newspaper i mean you know two together in the, of the center and then i figured out i had a short pair of shorts pattern and i put the shorts and then i took the rest of the newspaper and folded it over to, to make the pleat that you, that you put right on top of the center seam mm -hmm. of the, the shorts you sew it down mm -hmm. So it, it hides the shorts completely. Mm -hmm. So my dad was, he was always, always nosy. He was always coming to see what we were doing, what I was doing with the sewing machine, because I stayed in the sewing machine practically. That was my pastime. Okay. Mm -hmm. We didn't have TV, we didn't, and I didn't care about the the radio that much. I'm i never I wasn't a radio fan unless it was the LSU game. So anyway, I did it and I thought, you know, this is gonna work. 
So Daddy said, well, why don't you go select your, some fabric and let's see if it's going to work. So, and you know, at that time, there were no, this is important, there were no back zippers. And if anyone's close, I mean, remembers anything, the, the zippers were on the left side of, I mean, there were no back zippers. Finally, the miracle of the back zipper came in dresses. But for years, it was the side, the side seam. Well, that's why almost every dress before that buttoned up the back or mm -hmm. buttoned up the front. Okay. Because I was, I mean, there were no zippers. I was around before the zippers were. <laughs> so So when do you remember when when you first used a zipper? Were you still in high school or was it later? No. I wasn't in high school. I graduated from high school the year Pearl Harbor was December 41. I graduated in that June of 42. Okay. We were the first graduates after Pearl Harbor. And so, so that gives you some where, about where I was. And so then when you were making these culottes, then what happened next? Did it work? Yeah, it worked. It worked. Miracle of miracles, it worked. And my sister fell in love with the idea. Oh, she loved the culottes. I made her culottes. Uh -huh. And then gradually she started sewing. She started sewing after me. And she never, she had to have a pattern. I made, I would get one pattern. And especially the bodies, and then I'd make the skirt any way I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did after I was married. I would sew. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. But, well, let's, let's take some comments. Cheryl says she loves the stories. And then Kelly says, Grandma is so sweet. You're very blessed to have her. So people are enjoying your stories. So wait, you have to tell the best part about the culottes, though, of uh, how you decided you were going to wear them to school and what your dad yeah, thought. Yes, but I, I wasn't allowed to wear them to school. Daddy said, you can't wear shorts to school. I said, but daddy's like a skirt. But daddy was said no. So that was it. I mean, he was very generous, very modern, but no shorts to school. No matter how, I mean, I camouflaged him. No, no, that didn't work. But my sister, through the years, kept making culottes. And then when she became the golfer, but she was a golfer, mm -hmm. she used that duck, I told you. I think you said it was duck. Yeah. yeah. And made her several pairs. Well, they became the hit of her, her golf association. So anyway, uh, she was busy. So I made her a couple of pairs and uh, gave them to her for her birthday. And so, so she'd have them for the spring, and uh, and I made one in yellow. I'll never forget that. So that was our favorite color. I made one in yellow and one in not red. She would, would well, it was sort of a rose color, but it wasn't red. I remember that. Anyway, she 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 would wore them all the time mm -hmm. because that fabric never wore out. She That's never, right. She just used it and used it. And uh, anyway, so then moving on, once you finished up high school, what it, what kind of things did you keep sewing? Did you just primarily yeah. sew for yourself? Well, I really got interested in drawing the designs and what have you. And, and uh, I got ready to go to, off to school and I made my one enormous achievement was a beautiful stripe of fabric made out of uh, I mean, just a nice fabric, but all pastel colors. Mm -hmm. And I, I designed me a dress and I still think about my dress. I wore it and wore it. And I had a pattern with gores, but I decided I cut the gores down the pattern, just literally cut it uh -huh. so I could make more gores out of them. I think it was four anyway. I. Uh, and then I notched it and everything. And then I decided I'm going to either ruin this, or I'm going to make it. So I put <laughs> one this way 
with the notch and one this way. Then I put the other one this way and this way and match the notches so they would be exactly the colors. Mm -hmm. And I sewed them together and they turned out beautiful. It looks like an umbrella. It was so pretty. And then I had just uh, I always wore these round necks with the because I had all the, the darts in where I liked it. Uh -huh. And I used almost, I did use the same bodies a lot. Uh -huh. And then I made the, the sleeve with just one uh, thing right here. Uh -huh. And I had a plain striped top. Uh -huh. And then I had a band about this big that went around, sewn on. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the zipper on the side. <laughs> and that was. I got so many compliments on that dress, and I designed it, and I made it, and I was about 15 at the time. Uh -huh. I, was, I would say I was 15, and I think that was my, that is what gave me the urge that I can do this, I can make my clothes, and I did, and then and then I did, I just sewed, and then when I, when, when I was in school, those few years, I, I really couldn't sew. I mm -hmm. didn't have the time. And, and this uh, is when you were down in, in your bookkeeping school in New Orleans? In, in New Orleans, yes. And I didn't have any place to sew. I mean, I, that, that wasn't a time for me to sew. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lady, a farm lady, who was taken in sewing again. Mm -hmm. And I had Miss Bajeron sew for me. Mm -hmm. I would draw a picture, and she was excellent at doing that. The woman had enormous talent, and, uh, and she had a pedal machine, but she would uh, sew, and uh, so she made my clothes for a, a few years. Uh, yeah, a few years, and then I got married, and we went to California, and again, living in apartments and things, and I didn't have a chance to sew. And I just hated it. I just hated not. I have to go in and buy a dress, and I, I, it would, it would just kill me because I just never could find really what I wanted. It was just a time in my life that I was almost dormant of sewing. How many years was that? That was too many years. <laughs> uh, and then I married, and again, when I would have to go home to sew. And uh, Johnny was real good about that. He would take me in any time he had something. And then, of course, then I had your mother, and I began sewing for her. I made her, a, I would say, a dress a week. Then I got into sewing for her. Mm -hmm. It was just, and she was so adorable. Anyway, I dressed. I made things for her. So where were you living at that time? So when well, you and Granddaddy... We were living in a house trailer because we were moved. He was working in the oil field along the, the Louisiana coastline, and we would have to move almost every month. And trying to find apartments on the coast like that was impossible. And with the baby and the young, my dad said, the only thing you have to do is become one of the churches. <laughs> so I... He, Anyway, he came to one of the apartments in New Orleans and he said, you cannot live like this. So we got the trailer and uh, we, lived, we lived that way for seven years, mm -hmm. believe it or not. And then, uh, but before I got out of the trailer, your mother was, we were living in Homa and then my prize featherweight came into my life, my machine. That is true. Okay. So let me just, let me just pause before we go for this. Um, Ellen just put in a little comment. It says, it sounds like sewing really brought people together and it was a real bonding experience. And we don't really have that as much anymore, which is a shame. You and grandma seem to be kindred spirits. Yes. Which we will get to why grandma and I are kindred spirits because I spent so much time with her, but that's a little bit later in the history. So now grandma is going to tell us about her prized possession um, that my grandfather bought her. So grandma, what, what was the best present granddaddy ever gave you? Well, one of the best presents, okay. 
He gave me so many wonderful presents. He was very generous. And uh, anyway, the, we lived in the little town of Homa, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And it was, sing, it was it was a nice, nice little town. They had a nice Main Street shopping. Mm -hmm. Everything was Main Street shopping for many years. And uh, so then uh, we would drive by there. And she's always had a big mouth. Anyway, she would say, Mommy, you don't want a sewing machine for Christmas, do you? And I said, well, that would be very nice, Kay. Well, maybe Santa come over and you one. She was about four and a half or five. So we, so we went along and she said, so, but still I was surprised. I, I, I just, it was $150. And because I had looked at them. And now, came, what kind of machine are we talking about, Grandma? We're talking about my featherweight. Okay. <laughs> and, it was, and it was so compact and so great that, but that machine has been many miles and it has sewn many, many miles. I have made dresses. I have, and this sewing machine had all kind of attachments. Okay, so when did you get it? Did you get it for Christmas? I got it for Christmas. And how did Granddaddy pay for it? He paid for it. He had it put, put it on layaway uh -huh. and he paid for it out of his spending money, I guess. I mean, cigarette money and different. But what a man, what, I don't know how he paid for it. I never <laughs> asked. But it was on layaway and Kay knew it was there. Uh -huh. She went with him because he wanted her to see that it was going to be my present. And and then anyway, they were close like this. I mean, when her dad was available, if he left, she went with him. Well, sort of like you when when, when you were little. And so anyway, she and then mom used to send me yards of fabric just in a package. Uh, and then I and I just had I'd go in. That's all we did. She, okay, we we would go to two places to get a new uh, golden book or a piece of fabric, or we'd go look at the fabric store. Mm -hmm. And I'd let her s select some of the fabric she wanted, and then I. But she, the dresses, she hardly got to wear them because she was wearing a uniform to school. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the dresses I that I made, my sister had three little girls, their step little girls, and you know, and so after Kay had worn them a while, I would give them to Pat, and then her three girls would wear them out because I mean they too were on a budget, you know. Everybody when we first got married, everybody was on a budget, especially when you start having the babies. Well, I only had one. And uh, so anyway, I spent every minute and then I would make something for myself occasionally. So I'd have, no, I, I sewed for myself too. So do you I, remember the first thing you sewed on the featherweight? I'm sure it was a dress for Kay. Okay. And then right after that, I remember because it was in the winter and I got, I had had a piece of pink flannel, though, I mean wool, mm -hmm. not flannel, wool. And I didn't know what to do with it. In fact, my, this is a part of the story that was, that I told you that who had the magic hands. Uh, we used to go to Austin, where she always had fabric. She was another fabric uh, fiend. <laughs> she gave me this piece of fabric and I had had it. And I made Kay a pair of coveralls, overalls, not coveralls, overalls with a little strap with a button and a little jacket. And I didn't have enough for an overcoat, but I made her a little short jacket. Uh -huh. And that was my first real attempt at making anything tailored. Okay. And it turned out so nice. So I didn't put the buttonholes in it because I wasn't too good. 
Well, we were, it just so happened we were planning to drop John. It was going to take me to uh, uh, Austin for my birthday. Mm -hmm. So we waited, and then I brought the jacket with me. I brought what I had made, and you showed me how I could have made it a little better. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know what the whole secret was? Was clipping. Ah. And the whole secret around the getting it the tops. And she said, people are terrified about clipping, but clipping is what really makes tailoring work. That is true. So if you don't know, clipping is when you have a curved seam, so like in a neckline um, or, or a collar or, an or a corner, um, it, you clip it or like you cut the corner um, cut the corner so that when you flip it, you've got a nice sharp point, but then you also want to clip along the seam so that when you flip it, 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 there's some, a little bit of ease in there. It's not fighting against itself because it just got clipped. So that's, that's interesting. That's fascinating that Aunt Eunice is the one who taught you how to, to do that. Yes, it was, it was Eunice. She took it apart she, on the bottom of him and she took it and she said, You've done a really good job, but you didn't clip. And she said, your seams are straight. Everything is nice. And she took little scissors. She trimmed my seams, and she clipped them. And I thought, oh, no. Then she took a big steam iron. She was a big steam iron. And she finished it. And, and, and then she put the buttonholes in. And she said, I said, no, no, you don't have to put my buttonholes. Just I want, she had such nice, a good machine. Mm -hmm. And do you know what, Tony? What? She left that sewing machine to your mother. Where she did it go? She has it somewhere. You think so? I'm positive. I am positive. We'll have to find out what happened to it so I can add another one to the, the family archives of sewing yes. machines. Yes. No, no. She left a sewing machine and a few other things. And, and what? she left uh, several things. Uh, a table. Well, Grandma, we've moved so much since then that who knows where all that went. I, I, I'll bet you. She was, she was just crazy about cake. And do you know what else? Well, I didn't do it, but from this fabulous, fabulous seamstress who mm -hmm. who did these fabulous sewing, one uh, bought her a doll about 15 inches mm -hmm. and Eunice took scraps from her her sewing for mm -hmm. all these people and bought these fabulous fabrics and made a whole wardrobe for Kay's doll. No, I know. She recently found that doll and sent me a picture of it in one of the dresses from that Aunt Eunice made. Yes. Yeah. So that's very I mean, cool. She And they bought one of those trunks mm -hmm. and the two of them gave her that for Christmas. And that's all she saw. I mean, the, that, the rest of it was, but I recognized some of the fabrics and she made them stylish. I mean, like with capes and she just did a beautiful job. Mm -hmm. But she gave me many hints and one of them was clipping. And now I'm, I clip, I clip. And, it's, and I told you to clip. I clip. I clip, Grandma. I clip. I may not talk about it, but I clip. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things that, so when you, okay, so after, um, when did you build the house in New Iberia? How old? How old? 19. We moved in on 19, 1957. Okay. Uh, on the first day of the year. And then you, did you make anything for the house? Oh, yeah. Well, I made everything for the house. I did decorated case. A uh, room, uh, a uh, our bedroom, and all on sale fabric because we didn't have the extra money to. But and then the living room, I put all of the money, extra money. That's when I had those beautiful silk curtains to match the walls, and I I made curtains for the kitchen and kid. I got fabric. That's a, that was one of my uh, extravaganzas. I bought the fabric to match the wallpaper. And that was a fad at that time. I remember the that. The 50s, oh yeah, you had to buy the fabric. 
to that. And the fabric was really way overpriced, but I only had a small window. So, <laughs> so was that part of the whole collection? They made the wallpaper and the fabric and everything, and yes. then you could coordinate. Waverly, Waverly made probably the best. And they made the wallpaper to match with right. fabric to Almost, match. And... Yeah, they would have two or three wallpaper books, fabrics to match. Oh, very cool. Very yes. cool. It was nice. So it was nice. And and uh, as I said, uh, fabrics was, I mean, I, that was my biggest interest. Notice. Notice. We know. We know. So when did you uh, move down to Venezuela? We moved down to Venezuela three days before uh, Joni was, uh, Joni was two uh, on the 17th of August and we arrived on the 15th of August and we stayed six years. We arrived back home the spring of 1964. Okay, and so then did you take your featherweight with you? I took my featherweight with me and I made, several things for for Kay. What'd you make? Oh, dresses, dresses, dresses for Kay. And I didn't tell you this, but when Kay was in college at LSU, and then when she went to uh, for the summer as an exchange student to, to Mexico City, I made dresses for her. Mm -hmm. And Joan and I used to watch that girl Mm -hmm. And I would pick one of her dresses and liked it, and I would. Her, John would help me. We would uh, copy it, and then next day here we would go to the fabric store and get the fabric and make her dress. Well, she would wear the dress on the campus, and people would recognize that it was that girl. She had, she said, "Is that the same dress?" Yes, my mother made it, and I used to make cake. She was tall, not not too tall, but she was taller than most dresses. So that's why I sewed for her so much, even, even two pieces. I would make a skirt and she would love to shop for blouses mm -hmm. because she didn't get to shop for anything else. Mm -hmm. So she'd buy a pretty blouse and then she'd get the fabric she wanted for the skirt. And she loved skirts made with a band across the, the summer, you know, the mm -hmm. vein and the bottom cut on a bias. Okay. And I made her a number of those. And uh, she had lots of clothes, but made on that ship pattern, similar to it, that was coming back now, right? but more fitted. Mm -hmm. And I had a pattern that fit her perfectly. Mm -hmm. I could make the, the dress when she come home, for the weekend, she'd have a dress, and I made so many. I, I just, and then I would put pockets on some, and I put different <laughs> necklines and put different sleeves, but always the same dress length and everything, mm -hmm. and then just, just, just do them differently. But that's all they had in the stores, and that's what that girl wore. Right. So anyway. Kay had a lot of clothes, so when she was getting ready to come home from New from Mexico, of course, you know they always put you in a home in a in a, a host uh, with, with girls, a host family, girls. yeah, yeah, with girls, and there was two girls there, just about her size. So she wrote me a letter, and she said, "Mother, they are so crazy about these dresses. Is it okay if I give them one?" I says, "It's okay if you give them two. Mm -hmm. I said, you've worn them and uh, give them each two because she must have went down there with 20 dresses. That's a lot of dresses. I know, she went, really, I overdid this. But <laughs> and I was sewing a, a, a navy blue and white stripe one, mm -hmm. little stripes. And Johnny came in and he said, you only have a few. I was almost through with it. He said, you almost have a few hours. She's going to miss the plane. I said, no, I'm through with this. I'll clean up the mess later. That's so. pretty funny. So grandma started the weekend sewing challenges um, that I like to do as well. Get something sewn, like have an event, make a dress, 
and get it done in like, you know, two days. So grandma, grandma started that. It's in my genes. Um, I didn't even know that, that grandma had these, these marathon sewing. Well, wait, can, so. I, can I tell them you, that you may have told this story already though, about you sitting at my feet. We're not there yet. So when did, when did I start hanging out with you, grandma? Well, your mother was teaching and I was keeping the, the light. So we got pretty well bonded. But then how old was I when that started? Because mom Anna wasn't born yet. So oh no. You you no, you were uh, no when you were there, your mother was teaching she was pregnant. And no, but I'm talking about later on you would sit at my feet mm -hmm. and I but I had been sewing for you mm -hmm. for a while one of these uh tuck dresses that I made. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh you would sit and I gave you had a little pair of scissors and I gave you a piece of paper with lines and I told you to cut it straight. Well one day you said to me, Grandma, Grandma, look, I cut it right on the line. I stayed right on the line. And I looked down there and you had taken my tape measure and you had cut it in one inch pieces perfectly. So my tape measure was there at my feet. I picked you up and I said, Oh, no. <laughs> and that was your first compliment from sewing. Well, I think that's why I probably can't really explain how to cut straight when you cut because I started so young cutting little pieces of paper and then grandma's tape measure because that's what she had me doing while she was sewing and I was sitting at her feet under the table. So um, you also, back then, you took me to fabric stores, right, Grandma? Oh, you? yes, I took you to fabric stores early. And uh, I took you shopping and uh, showed you pretty dresses and things mm -hmm. like that. And uh, to gotchos in, in Baton Rouge. And uh, you just uh, you just grew up looking at fabrics and... Touching poor, fabrics. Poor she let me touch the fabrics. Making, That's part of the problem. And making dresses for occasions well, you had great aunts getting married and you had to have a new dress mm -hmm. for, to wear and i uh because there was a group there you know yeah and uh so anyway you just uh you would just it, it, it seems like that's what i did most with you i didn't cook with you mm -mm. i didn't bake with you we sewed we we i was well, there was two little girls. I had four girls to so far. Joni, Kay, and you, and Anna. So when you have four little girls to so far, you're kind of busy with well, the sewing and, machine. And Grandma gets busy. So Joan is my aunt. So my mom and my aunt were Joan and Kay. And, you yeah. know, obviously that was when they were younger. Yeah. And then once Anna and I came into the picture um, in the 70s, late seventies, then, you know, grandma had little dresses, more little dresses to sew. And I need to point out that grandma like does like these beautiful, like I still have, my mom called me recently and said that she still had my first communion dress that grandma made, which like the whole front piece of it is all like little tucks with inset lace strips. Do you remember that? And then there's like, I don't, I, it's a, I know it's a full skirt and there's a big bow that ties in the back. But I don't, and I know it had like little um, pearl heart shaped buttons down the front and had a little round neck and had little white puff sleeves. And I think I was eight when I wore that because um, we moved to Belgium when I was seven and I know I, so I was probably about eight. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then my sister wore it because, you know, she was younger and a little bit, now she's taller than I am, but at the time she was, you know, she was smaller than I was. So when she, it came her turn, she wore the same dress. But we did find that recently. And it's just, I mean, it's a marvel that grandma was fantastic at tucks. I mean, like I had, I don't sew tucks. I just, I don't have a reason to. And grandma just like masterfully sewed tucks and puff sleeves and little gathered skirts. You remember that grandma? Yeah. And you know, I took my sewing machine to uh, Venezuela. And two of my very dear friends, you know both of them, Jackie Cannon mm -hmm. and Vesta Poe, mm -hmm. both got pregnant. Mm -hmm. And 
finding maternity clothes was not easy. Well, th but fabrics in Venezuela are abundant. I mean. Okay. So anyway, we would go. I would go to the market. I was the only one that wanted to go to the market and where, where the fabric was. So they let me buy. So I bought fabrics and I made them each two maternity dresses mm -hmm. on my little fe featherweight. And of course, they were delighted because it was hot down there. And I'm, when you're pregnant, you're even hotter. Mm -hmm. So I made these dresses sleeveless and just real cute maternity dresses. And they were so grateful. They were so grateful. And, uh, but they don't make maternity dresses the style they used to. They used to make them, you could wear a straight skirt and the hole was cut out in the front. Uh huh. And then you just had a, 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 a string like that you, uh, no waistband. Okay. It was just like a string uh -huh. that would come across and then you would tie it or you could let it go. Uh -huh. And the hole was cut about like that. Mm -hmm. And then I made them each, uh, each two with the hole out. And they said, oh, that's so comfortable, you mm -hmm. know? And it was so cool. Mm -hmm. And the, the baby just kind of came out mm -hmm. and then the top covered it. Right. And uh, anyway, they were both thrilled. And of course I used, I made, when I, I sent a whole bolt of fabric mm -hmm. in my shipment, the second shipment, Mm -hmm. After three years, you can have a second shipment. And I made, and we, then we were transferred to a camp in uh, uh, the California camp, which had really nice houses in Maracaibo. And they had windows all around, but they didn't have anything in the windows. So when I came on the vacation, I sent a whole boat. Mm -hmm. And my little singer sewing machine and I, made draw drapes for all of those windows uh -huh. and the envy of everyone <laughs> i mean they said why are you spending so much money on this down here i said for two reasons i like privacy at night and i said but the main reason is because I've, I've got this on sale and I haven't been able to make any curtains or anything mm -hmm. for three years. I said, I just wanted, I just wanted to do it. I don't have anything else to do. So anyway, I did that, and then I did Kay and uh, Joan's room over, mm -hmm. and uh, they picked out a piece of turquoise uh, fabric and with prints, and I made that. They only had two windows, so. And I only had two windows in my bedroom. So uh, everything was on a budget. But you know, the singer song that my little featherweight. And then my, I told you my mother had all these sisters. Well, the third sister left home and gone to be a nurse, but had not gone way up into the nursing career, you know. Mm -hmm. Luke and uh, didn't marry until she was 50. But she had been so kind and so good to me when your mother was born. And Johnny had two surgeries and she had been so nice. So I made, she asked me if I would make her a wedding dress because at 50, she couldn't find anything that she liked and that was appropriate. And so, of course, away we go to back to New Orleans mm -hmm. to look for the fabric. And I ended up, I said, let's look to so book to the books. And I made her three dresses besides her wedding dress. And uh, so she would have these really pretty new dresses for her, her trousseau dresses. And uh, she was so happy. And uh, she went, they went to Las Vegas and ever, she wore her wedding dress. It was a short dress, well, to her knees, a little below her knees. And uh, that's where she met 
uh, Liberace, <laughs> and I have all the pictures of Toulouse. Was well, she wearing one of your dresses when she met Liberace? Yes. Oh, nice. She was Very wearing nice. her wedding dress. The day, Very nice. The day she met Liberace at the club, at the rest, I mean, the hotel they were staying at, he uh -huh. was at the hotel. Uh, Performing? Oh, yes, in the, in the showroom, you know, what they had there. That big entertainment. That's, I, I haven't been to a hotel like that in years, but I don't know if they still do that. They do. The Roosevelt in, in no, New Orleans, the Blue Room. Mm. I mean, I'm, I can't see why that custom would have uh, faded out. But anyway, she, uh, Liberace and his whole uh, uh, orchestra set up, yeah, his whole orchestra set up. And it was, uh, I still have all of that. We have to find those pictures because that would be fun to. Um, um, we'll have we would have to find that. So we have a couple well, of. She left all that to me in a will. No, she no, said... I'm saying the pictures that you have of Aunt Lucy at with Liberace. We'll have to go through your boxes and I, find. She's that. not with him. He just oh. did all this for her. Oh, okay. He okay. didn't take his. And what is so good about this? He didn't. He signed his name. But he also also drew the little uh, uh, piano, piano under. He yeah. did, he didn't do that all. He said that was special. Okay. So anyway, that was uh, my little sewing machine has done some real fun things. It has memorable. It has. It has. It yes. Has. And then we came back from Venezuela, and I still had only the singer sewing machine. And several years after that, um, they had, I, I, I got another sewing machine. That one you haven't seen, I have in the closet. Okay, we'll have to pull that one out and look yeah, at I it too. Yeah, have to pull that one out. That is to what, see what it is. That is what I did. Uh, it had wonderful attachments. And, you know, I think one of the, the fallacies of a lot of people is that they buy a machine and they don't realize what they have. Mm -hmm. They have wonderful attachments and they look at this and I don't know what this is for, but they're so happy to demonstrate in those stores that sell these products. They really want you to use it. Mm -hmm. And what I did, and this is a clue for anyone who's sewing for children, I there's the chira, that's the one the press with the little hole in the middle. Mm -hmm. And by adjusting your tension and your uh, a stitch length, you can shear whatever you want. So I had K's, I had yours, and, and Anna's name. So what I did. I got your waist, and then what I did, I sheared a piece about this long, mm -hmm. and then I multiplied it by the by the waist mm -hmm. fractions. If it mm -hmm. <laughs> to be, nevertheless, then when I got ready to make you a gathered skirt, you would just me mention mm -hmm. gathered skirts. I would set the the machine, the tension. The link stitch. Here's the skirt all gathered ready, the right size. It's going to fit on the bodies. Wow. And I, I was wondering what I did with that. It might be in that, a box somewhere. And I did. It's it. for sure in a box somewhere, Grandma. And, 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 uh, and the, for the sleeves, mm -hmm. I did the same thing. So when I, fit, when I gathered the sleeves, I could, didn't even have to measure. I could just gather and sew it on, and it was finished. Wow, that's pretty impressive. So we have some people who've who've made some comments. Uh, Vanessa really has enjoyed it. She's enjoyed hearing your sewing journey. Ellen, Ellen wants more of your secrets. I think you've now shared some with with how to shear and measurements and all that good stuff. Uh, Patricia lost the live stream, but she's been enjoying it so far. And then Cheryl's watching, and she said that you sewed for her. She wouldn't have had a wedding dress. Did you forget about that? No. So Cheryl's Cheryl's grandma's goddaughter, my her sister's 
eldest. And uh, so I didn't realize that you made her dress when she married John. Well, let me tell you that she and I, she couldn't find anything. And she wanted, she really wanted lavender. So we came to, to Houston to look. Well, we went to all the stores. We couldn't find anything, nothing. I mean, there just wasn't anything. So we went to this store and they had this long dress. They had, it was a chiffon type. And they had sleeves, but they had elastic in the sleeves. And it was a long dress. And, but I saw the potential, but it was an ugly dress. So we bought it, we brought it home. And then I started. I cut it off first, the length she wanted, to give me some fabric uh -huh. to start sewing with. So I took the, then I made a wide band for her sleeve uh -huh. and put the little covered buttons here. So that changed the sleeve from just elastic to a very elegant sleeve, mm -hmm. a bride sleeve. Then we took, uh, then, then we made the uh, the skirt shorter, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they had the zipper up the back. But then I put covered buttons up the back, mm -hmm. and we made it very bride like, mm -hmm. and uh, just altered the dress to uh, to look like a bride. That's very and, cool. And I think we and we put another belt on it, a, a tie belt, and uh, then she got her shoes tied to match. And uh, she just looked very, very pretty and very bride-like from this ugly dress. <laughs> but it had, I saw all of the potential when I saw the dress. Uh -huh. But she didn't see any of it until I started showing her what we were going to do. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was embroidered on the bottom. And I, th I think that's where we made the cuffs out of them. I don't quite remember all we did, but we did alter the dress to fit her real well through the, the bodice. It wasn't all bluesy. It was, the fabric was there. The design was, uh, and anyway, she did look very bride-like and very pretty on her wedding day. Well, that's, that's awesome. I didn't realize it because I was seven when she got married. So uh, for the second time. So that, that I did not know. So thank you for sharing that story, Cheryl. Do you I, remember how she looked? I remember it was, it was purple. Like I, that's what I remember as it a little kid. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I remember really liking the color cause it was purple and I thought it was pretty, but I don't specifically remember the dress. So we'll have to dig out well, a photo. I wouldn't have seen it before, you see. And, right. Uh, I wouldn't have seen the before, but I mean, I remember the dress, I thinking that it was very pretty and it was purple cause that's my I favorite color. Didn't so. In New Iberia, up over at the specialty store, they did. They had all the, these machines years and years old when women used to make all their clothes. Mm -hmm. They covered buttons, they made buttonholes. I mean, they made buttonholes, they made uh, all types of, of uh, accessory type things you needed, mm -hmm. and uh, really professional everything belts with buckles mm -hmm. and uh, I use them many times many so times. because because the thing we need to remind everyone of is that back in the day sewing machines when you started sewing there was only one stitch you only could make a straight stitch right grandma yeah. with your very first machine and the featherweight only sews a straight stitch right or does it sew zigzag, zigzag. so zigzag and straight stitch yeah but that's it yeah. There is no buttonhole feature to Oh, stitch. you have to buy the buttonhole maker. Okay. And hook it on. And then, oh, no, you could buy that camp. But it was a big piece of uh, about, about five inches long and mm -hmm. about three inches wide. And it was heavy. You had to hook. They had a hook on it. You had to put on the back of them the way you would put the presser foot. Mm -hmm. You had to put it on there. And then you had to adjust it with screws mm -hmm. and uh, get it. They had the numbers. Mm -hmm. but, and I got, that's what I, why I did not do the buttonholes on my little pink jacket. I'm okay. Wearing. That's why I took it to, uh, but she, 
she had something that made buttonholes. I, but Eunice was so different uh -huh. from anyone I had ever seen. So, because she had, as I said, she had magic hands. Right. But anyway, she was. Uh, it was. It was just an experience to know her, and she was just an. Now my godmother had. She could really sew. I mm -hmm. mean, she really could. And you know, she could do handwork. Right. She and, did a lot and, of crochet and, and knitting and, and all that kind of stuff. And tatting. She made beautiful tatting, which was that little thing she tied that those like, knots. I, I and, still am not 100% on what how that happens. But, but sitting at a sewing machine and sewing, it's all in patience. Mm -hmm. And it's in wanting to do it. I mean, Joan, your youngest aunt, she says the sewing machine hates her. She said, when I sit there, it says, okay, let's get her. That's <laughs> and the, the nun from the convent said, she was one of my best thinkers for the second half. That, that must be what they're doing in Louisiana, the half sewing and half cooking. But she ended up being uh, Miss Ben Crocker of, uh, of her high school of, of Louisiana. But she did it. She said, Mother, I could answer. She said, please don't advertise that. She <laughs> said, it was all on the computer. It was all questions to answer about uh -huh. health and yeah. all that. She said, I knew all of that. She said, they did not ask me to sit in the sewing machine. And so, so well, don't put me in that. Yeah. But I think that, yes, I think the sewing gene skipped. Um, Cheryl earlier, earlier left the comment that the sewing gene skipped over her. And then Lee agreed that the darts beat her up. So um, I think that it's funny um, that, uh, Lee also said that she's with Joan on the sewing machine. She feels like the sewing machine's out to get her too. <laughs> so, and then just going back to some of the comments, um, Cheryl said that she, she thought her dress turned out beautifully and that she wore it until it basically fell apart. <laughs> so um, I think that with sewing, I think that everybody who's tuned in can agree that it's one of those things where you have the opportunity to make something completely unique yeah. that, is just for you and the you color know. you want and the color you want it's like it's like finding finding the dress even if you know like you find a style you like and then saying but this color isn't my color or i think it would look yeah, better in this so. and that's one of the reasons why i use a lot of prints because i love printed fabric and i love the color variation and i love mixing prints because that's just kind of how I express myself. And that's, that's what makes me feel like me. And so that's one of my big sewing things. So grandma, do you have any, oh wait, no, one thing we have to talk about before we start winding down is the obsession with fabric. So <laughs> when, if you sew, you are, you have an obsession. It's true. And when I was, so we talked about when I was little, grandma used to take me to the fabric stores and she put me into the shopping buggy and let me touch things as you know she pushed it around yeah. the store and back then fabric stores only sold fabric right grandma and they had all the fabrics they had all the different types of fabrics year-round it wasn't like going to fabric stores now where they only have like a few of the types of fabrics and if you want something specific like you know lawn or you want corduroy in august you can't get it no yeah these these stores and they would have uh, a spring sale and a fall sale, maybe. But it was, uh, and usually the things that they put on sale were not, there, there wasn't five yards. It would be lucky if you had found three yards, you know. Mm -hmm. And, but if you think back even way before I was born, the only way people had dresses really is if they sewed them themselves. Right. And if you look at some of these uh, old movies, I mean, like uh, 
any of the like the crown and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, the, what was this that we just finished watching on and on? That that was part of the fascination for me. Mm -hmm. They showed them going in and having their dresses made. Oh, uh, what was that? The, the, not the Gilded Age. Yeah, the Gilded Age. That's uh -huh. what you were watching. And the, especially the, the the young girl. And she would she always have an address made, always have an address made. And I've, in every every uh, series, I mean, every week, or whenever it came on every week, she was having one or two or three. I was more interested in watching her <laughs> get her dresses fitted and watch how what they were doing than as I, I enjoyed that as much as I told Anna. I'm enjoying this as much as the story. And I don't, didn't quite get that. <laughs> that I would enjoy watching the construction of the dresses being fitted as I watch the story. I have to say, I do enjoy a movie where they are doing fashion stuff and they're actually doing real fitting. fitting because that's just really fascinating to me. And it doesn't happen in a lot of movies, but occasionally you can find some movies and I'll think about it and maybe we'll chat about and that another this time. This one has a lot of other I haven't seen The Gilded Age because that's something Anna and Grandma watched um, over at Grandma's house, but I was not there. So, um, but fabric stores aren't like they used to be. They used to be, I remember being younger. I mean, I remember in eighth grade, we had an eighth grade, we had two eighth grade dances. So we had one that was at school, the last day of school. And then we had another one that was a formal um, eighth grade dance that was at like the local country club up in North Houston. And I, I didn't remember the part of going shopping and trying to find a dress with grandma and mom, but grandma was telling me about that not too long ago, how we couldn't find something that I wanted. And so then grandma came up with the idea of, well, why don't we go see if we can find a pattern you like, and then buy fabric. And she made my eighth grade dress. So um, I have a picture of it somewhere. That I'm, is one of my masterpieces. That is that I'm one of your masterpieces? I'm really proud of. I will have to find it. I want to say it's in the, it's, I have it somewhere. I just have to find it. Um, it was, let me describe it for you. It was a, it was a, well, do you remember the brand? It was, a, it was, a, oh, it was a Jessica McClintock pattern. Okay. And it had a scoop neck and then it had like a, I thought it was a low cut back back in the day i could still wear a normal bra with it but it was just the scoop in the back was just above the bra and then it had these big now keep in mind this is 1988 it had these big puff sleeves like tall puff sleeves okay that were fitted at the elbow and then they had there was lace at the bottom a beautiful piece of lace beautiful lace and then it kind of i think it did it have it like that real tight it fit as like a bodice and then did it have a v in the front did it come down in a point at the no, front of the bodice no. no it was just round and then it was a full gathered skirt no not gathered it wasn't gathered what no was it? okay grandma it made was, it she made it was big please and big it please. was so difficult what i did i had to put the fabric I had her out again and pleating the, that's a, something you can do if you have something really difficult i took the pattern out again pinned it all together and put it before i sewed it on and then i had all of this fabric on my long dining room table and i folded with the pattern and then I would take the pattern off and pin them. And that's the way I got all of these very, very intricate uh, pleats around this. But it turned out gorgeous. You will look like a princess. I did look like a princess. I'm not going to lie. I do not remember how that pale tail was pink. attached. It was pale, pale pink moray taffeta. Yes. Pale pink moray taffeta with cream lace. And I had my hair pulled up um, on the sides and it was all curls. And then I had like little pink rosebud barrettes with like little ribbons hanging down 80s guys. It was the A's 88. It was, I was like totally on point for the time period. So um, that was, that was my adventure with grandma. And I got to pick out my fabric and we found the pattern and grandma measured me and she made everything. And my dad was happy because it was cheaper back then to make a dress than it was to buy one at the mall. So um, I know he was happy about that. And then my other dress that I 
loved, and I don't know what happened to this dress. It was this really cool knit fabric that was kind of this pop art. So it was very graphic and it had a whole bunch of different patterns all mixed onto the same piece of fabric. And grandma made me a knit dress. It was sleeveless and it had a round neck and then it had a dropped waist, which was my total favorite. And, and then it was, it was just gathered on that. Right. But it was a drop waist. I love a good drop waist. Um, also 1988. And so. your mother always loved drop I waist. I love to drop waist because I don't like anything sitting at my natural waist. So drop waist is more of a, my natural waist. And then I had, I had this cool headband, like, and then it tied over my shoulder. And so I kind of, I don't remember. I think I probably had a ponytail because I always had a ponytail, but I still wore a headband. So, um, yeah. So Vicki said that she hasn't sewn anything substantial for a few years. She used to sew everything she wore and she sewed a lot of clothes for her sons when they were little. And now you make her feel like sewing a grin, grandma. And then Janelle said she loved the Gilded Age series. She watched it too. And Ellen wants to know if we can see pictures next time of the creation. We will dig through things and see if we can find them, Ellen. And I might post them in the community well, tab. I, I, the little dress, I think probably the first one, but it's, it's, it turned yellow, but it wasn't, it was white. We'll find something. We'll have a, we'll have a retrospective at some point. I know I have pictures of my eighth grade dance, the pink dress. I don't know if I have any pictures of the, other dress because back then everything was film and you know you would get dressed and go do something and if it wasn't super super monumentous occasion nobody took pictures so um unfortunately but we'll see what we can find and and share that with you and then grandma um when grandma moved out of her house in louisiana and this is when i was in college this is after my grandfather passed away um she decided to just move to houston because that's where everybody was i inherited a lot of fabric because grandma loved fabric and I love fabric. And that's one reason I love fabric, I think, is because I inherited all that fabric from you. If you sew, you you buy fabric. You do. Anticipating you're going to do something. And but sometimes you don't get to it, you know. That's true. That's true. Something comes before it. Right. That's more important. And then the fabric sits there and you, you, you really hadn't forgotten it, but you just don't think about hey, it. Hey, I forgot fabric. I started organizing mine again and remembered I had stuff. So my goal for this year, and I am going to continue to work on this, is to not buy new fabric and to use what I've got because there's a lot of it. I love it. I want to make stuff with it and I want to wear it because that's just kind of the best part of it is being able to make whatever you want. So, Grandma, do you have any last minute tips? Things people must do that will help them sew better? Well, not, not really. It just that uh, uh, it just depends on your fabrics. That's it. Just remember, you, you've got to follow the, uh, you don't have to follow a pattern exactly. If you have an idea, use it. I mean, that's the idea of sewing. Don't I? I can, I don't think that I have ever stuck to a pattern. And one thing was the pink dress I did. But if, if you if you really love to sew and you see something you like, get a pattern that is basic. I have some patterns that I have used so many times, so many times, and pants. I mean, sit on a chair and measure from your waist to the seat of the chair. And that is how long your cross should be. Okay. That's, that's grandma's tips for today. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be it. We're going to wrap it up. Let me know um, if you've enjoyed this. I think everybody that was here live has enjoyed it. I've gotten lots of comments. Um, you know, I love sewing. Grandma loves sewing. This is something that we have shared throughout my life together. Um, nobody else really got the sewing bug like I did. Um, my sister is doing some quilting and she's starting to get into the sewing bug, but she still has the restraint of not buying fabric unless she has a plan. So she's not quite there yet. But anyway, 
Thank you guys so much for joining but us today. Holly does beautiful quilting. She does do beautiful quilting, but I think she gets that from Aunt Pat because Aunt Pat was the quilter in the family, you know? And I think I get the sewing from you, right, Grandma? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you are joining the live stream late or watching on the replay and you don't want to miss out next time, be sure to click the link in the description below to sign up for the newsletter. I only send it once a month. It is always right before the live stream. I'm going to tell you what's happening, who's going to be joining me, what we're going to be chatting about, and most importantly, the day and time. So let's see. Karen says, thanks, Grandma, learning about your sewing life. I have made, I have to make a that girl dress. Ellen said, thanks, Grandma and Tony. Lots of fun. Yvonne said, she started sewing at her grandma's feet back in 1962. Um, Janelle said, thanks grandma. And Yvonne said she was making doll clothes when she started. So, um, thank you. Well, I, you know, I made doll clothes too. When you started? Yeah. yeah. And I made a whole, do you remember your two dolls that you took on the, uh, the plane on the plane? Yeah. I made wardrobe for BB and Beanie and, and, and Beanie. Yeah. Yes. A they whole, both I had forgotten making those. Uh, yeah. Those dresses, I think I made about three or four. They're both still wearing their dresses, Grandma. They're both still wearing. Yeah. Bibi's got on her dress and Beanie has on her dress. They're both wearing dresses you made. So Lee said she loved it and she's got to run. So thank you, everybody, again. Don't forget to click the link to sign up for the newsletter so you know when we're coming back again. I'm doing these monthly through the year. So you definitely want to join in on the fun and the, the chat and uh, thanks, Patricia. Thank you for joining us. And everyone have a lovely, lovely Saturday. And we are going to, to go find some lunch now. So anyway, thanks, everyone. Grandma, wave and say goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, everyone.